think so. Yeah. I mean, I think the I think the basic challenge for the market has been well defined for a while now, which is the Fed has been tightening into a slowdown. I'm not breaking news. Yep. Uh, that's still the case. Inflation's still too high. The Fed still needs to drain liquidity and tighten the financial conditions. I think we've learned a lot, though, in the past six, six weeks or so. We've learned that the economy continues to be very durable and generate an enormous amount of nominal GDP growth yeah. led by the service sector and, of course, the labor market. We've learned that corporate America is in very good shape and making a claim on all that nominal GDP growth. And as of yesterday, I think we can breathe a little bit easier as it relates to the trajectory of inflation. Now, that said, the Fed is still tightening to slow down. They still have their work cut out for themselves. We're still a long way from 2% core inflation. And so I don't think that dynamic completely changes. But in general, the narrative is a bit balanced today versus where it was coming out of the second quarter. And what does the speed, trajectory, character of the rebound tell you about what the setup was and what we can expect from here in terms of just the mechanics of it and how, I guess, washed out the market got? What's very clear is uh, it's hard to identify who the sellers would be now. It's pretty clear who the buyers will be. And so in the very short term, there's two clear places where we see sponsorship. One is corporate buybacks. So as we know, we've kind of cleared the blackout window as companies reported the second quarter. We expect $1 trillion of buybacks this year. So we are in the open window for that. And if you think about a Microsoft or a Google or an Apple, you know, these plans are 90 billion, 70 billion, 60 billion. Um, and so there's plenty of ammo there. The other place we look is what we call the non-discretionary trading community. Think CTAs, uh, vol control products, risk parity as a function of the rally, as a function of the turn down in realized volatility, and then some cross-asset correlation switches. That community, kind of non-discretionary funds are buying it's hard to find the incremental seller right now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those systematic strategies, they'll, they'll kind of follow along with the trend. And also they just decide how much exposure to have based on how volatile the market has been. And it's obviously calmed down quite a bit. I guess, you know, if you're, if you're out there looking for traps, it's, well, we've thought before that we were sort of in tune with where the Fed was going to go. Um, you know, have we simply rebuilt the Fed's capacity to, you know, be vigilant on inflation beyond what we think right now. Even though we think in the six-month window the market looks out, it looks like the Fed is, is going to be net friendlier than we expected a few months ago. Again, I think they can breathe a little bit easier because for the first time in what feels like a long time, inflation doesn't feel like it's out of control. I think at 9.1 percent, that question was an open one. Um, like I said before, though, They've met one of their two objectives. They're at full employment. Three and a half percent unemployment, if anything, is probably through full unemployment. They're still missing the mark on core inflation by over 2x. It's a long road from 4.8 to 2.0. And as a client uh, who's been in the market for a long time put it to me, he said, hey, the hard yards in the war against inflation aren't necessarily from 5% to 3%. It's from 3% to 2%, because that's where we're going to get into the how much has the world changed around labor, deglobalization, et cetera. And so I think the Fed, again, they still have work to do. In our view, they're going to go 50 basis points next month, 25 November, 25 December, and that'll be three and a quarter come year end. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm inclined to think we should still be open minded that they may have a little bit more work to do ultimately. Yeah, I mean, we can define what a Fed pivot would be, but that might actually qualify relative to where we were thinking about, you know, in the stagflation moment of a few months ago, uh, that in fact it was going to be, you know, unending, well beyond 4%. Um, so you think that's priced in at this point? I mean, you mentioned it, it's hard to get from 5 to 3. We're not at 5 yet, really, in terms of inflation. Where, do, where would equities be at 5? I guess that's the question of whether we've already priced in the good scenario. One interesting way to look at this is to think about it through the prism of financial conditions, which yeah. is, we, you know, how we think the Fed uh, – transmits their policy. The interesting thing is, financial conditions today, our index is easier as we speak than it was in early June. Hmm. They blasted away 75 basis points in June, 75 in July, and financial conditions, again, continue to ease. And so they clearly probably feel better about the outlook for growth as we do. 3.3 million new jobs this year. Seven months in, 3.3 million new jobs. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the service side of the economy uh, has held up remarkably well. And so they can probably feel a little bit more confident in the doing. But like I said, it's going to be a show me story. Does inflation come down far enough for them to back off? And like I said, I think that's still an open question.